Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out this guy. This is the VI Fly X150 and it's a 4 inch model that with a battery comes in under 250 grams. So let's get and take a look at it. So how have they managed to get a 4 inch model under 250 grams? Well, the answer is quite simple actually. They have taken 3 inch components and fitted it on a 4 inch frame, well just about a 4 inch frame, there's a little bit of overlapping there, but it works. And the weight of this copter with a 650 milliamp 4S battery is 247 grams. They've come down in kV on the motors, so I think they are 3,300 kV. And they are a branded motor, so they're Sunny Sky motors, which, you know, are a reputable brand. Now, I've flown this guy already, and what I noticed with the 4 inch propeller running on these smaller motors is that it tends to lack a little bit of torque and you'll see it in the flight video a little bit later so when you go up on the throttle it takes a little bit of time for the props to spool up to maximum RPM and it kind of gradually accelerates as you go up on the throttle now I did my Kamori build previously on the channel and that takes two inch components and puts a three inch propeller on it and I didn't notice that lack of torque but I guess as the prop size gets bigger you'll notice that more I know there's some people put in the 1407 motors on five inch models and I imagine they would be experiencing a similar sort of thing but what I really like about this is that it is sticking it to the regulations, you know, 247 grams. We have a four inch propeller here, so I still think it's going to have a great performance. So the propellers that it comes with are a Dow prop. They are a... 40 45 so quite a high pitch i quite like these propellers the frame it's a minimalistic frame you can see here we've got thin arms here but the carbon is very thick and as this is a lightweight copter i've actually crashed it a couple of times and nothing broke so yeah i was actually surprised how strong this is so the battery that I'm going to be using here it's a tattoo 650 milliamp and I didn't think this was going to be enough but it actually was fine perfect battery and I don't think you will benefit using a 850 milliamp so that's pretty cool we have got this battery tray here and you could lose a little bit of weight if you got rid of this now one thing that I found is that the battery was very slippy and I actually flew this copter without a battery mat and it threw a battery. They do give you some Velcro to put on your battery but as I'm using multiple batteries I don't find that to be very useful so I use this silicon battery mat. I think it's from Banggood there and yeah that sandwiches the battery in there nicely. So let's talk about more of the specifications. So you can see here we've got this ESC board here. It is a 20 amp BL Halley S 4-in-1 and I think it is VI Fly's own design here. So the board isn't actually part of the structure of the frame, which is good. It sits on these standoffs. One thing I will say though, as you can see, we have this stack up here and it's just relying on these standoffs here for the strength but as I say I've crashed it a few times and I haven't had a problem with it so above that we have the flight controller it is a omnibus F4 as the target and it is running beta flight version 3.23 and it was set up really nicely out of the box actually there was just a couple of things that I needed to change but nothing major so if you're after something that is set up pretty nice then you know this might be for you the rates were custom so I've changed those to 0.8 the PIDs on here are custom and there's some anti-gravity gain put in there as well 
Then above that we have got the VTX. It is a 40 channel and it switches between 25 milliwatt, 200 milliwatt and 600 milliwatt. You've got this button on here to go through the various options and you've got an LED board on the back here and this is just brilliant. It's such a small thing but check this out tells you the battery voltage on there and then you've got the channel and also the power output now one thing I didn't like about the channel selection is you have to go through every single band and channel you can't individually select the bands and channels so it's a bit of a pain and then you've got a long press of the button here and that will take you through the three different power options but I thought that was a pretty nice VTX and we have got a proper SMA connector here with a Cloverleaf antenna right hand polarized and it is a SMA connector so that's pretty cool then we have got a Foxier micro camera so it's a branded camera and we know this to be a good camera one thing I've noticed though is that it's soldered direct rather than using a connector I guess that's so the connector doesn't get in the way of that back plate so you can have a crazy angle so yeah they've thought about that so this is the bind and fly version so it's come with a XM plus you actually can get it with a cheap transmitter as a ready to fly one thing to note about this XM plus is that it has come with the RSSI on channel 16 which means that if you are binding your transmitter to it and want to use the RSSI on the aux channel it's already set up in beta flight by the way then you're gonna have to buy Find your transmitter with the channels 1 to 16 selected which does mean you're going to get more latency than you get if you had channels 1 to 8 I wish they had flashed it with the version of the firmware where the RSSI is on channel 8 but I guess you could do that yourself it's it's not a huge deal one thing that I thought was strange is the way they have routed the antennas they have put a single heat shrink over them and two cable ties and they are just touching their together so I'll have to see what the range is like if that causes any issues but yeah in general I really like this copter I like what it's doing and it's fairly lightweight you could stick a camera on there you've got some slots here this actually I think I think that's plastic there but yeah you could use a strap and put a camera around there but yeah it might get in the way of this antenna that it comes with and I think it would be pretty sluggish if you put a camera on the top there as well but other things that you get in the package you get a spare set of these dowel props we have got a spanner and a couple of allen keys and we have got the velcro for the battery then we have got a manual and it doesn't tell you loads of stuff but this is the transmitter here that you can get but yeah this one is pretty much set up out of the box so it doesn't give you many instructions when it comes to like the setup and stuff but the idea is that you know you use their setup okay let's have a look what we are dealing with here on the line of sight just a couple of notches of throttle and it's hovering seems okay let's go for a punch yeah pretty cool I didn't hear any vibrations or oscillations and it disappears Okay, let's go for Acro. You can see those LEDs really bright. Yeah, I was expecting some de oscillations on the line of sight with the stock pits, but maybe because it's a four inch, it can go a little bit higher on the gains, maybe. Yeah, pretty cool. 
So let's just try that bunch again. Yeah, I'm not as blown away by the punch as I thought I was going to be, but there's no denying that it's got a lot of power. Yeah, it's interesting. It sort of starts off slow and then accelerates. So maybe as those props spool up. I'll do that again. So if I go up on the throttle. Yeah, it gets faster and faster <laughs> rather than like instant. So a little bit of time for it to spool up. I think that's why it wasn't as sort of mind blowing when I first did it, but yeah. It's got some good punch. Like those LEDs, they are really showing up well. Not too loud either which I'm always a fan of these days. Try not to annoy people if I can. So uh, yeah, line of sight at least. It seems very nice. I like these props. Of course you could put much stiffer ones on, but I think it would put the weight up. Not sure if it's needed. But yeah, I like it. Flick it back into angle mode just to see if we've got any drift. And there's none whatsoever. And I can see the voltage of my battery on the back, 14.8. So I can fly a little bit more if I want to. <laughs> I really like that, it's such a small thing. But it's brilliant. Of course it means you have to have an extra display on there, like three displays to get all the information on. I'm fine with that. It's pretty cool. What are we at now? 14.6. There's loads of power left. Anyways, I just wanted to check what the punch is like and what the tune is like and whether we're getting any flips of death and everything seems fine. So. Let's go in for a landing. Okay, let's see how it copes doing foot put the. Pitch is looking nice and clear. Not seeing too much interference. Wow, range is really good. RSSI value staying nice. So those trees at the back there, they are 100 meters away. Oh yeah. You can really see the punch when doing FPV. Man, that video signal, crystal clear. Yeah, see the battery sag there. So yeah, quite heavy on the amps. Let's check out the tune. First with the hesitation, backflip. Wow, no movement whatsoever. Roll, no movement. So seems like the P and the Ds are pretty good out of the box. Let's try the I. Ah, bit of movement there, so needs the eye gain lifting on the pitch. But man, I cannot complain about this. Just look at that RSSI though. Let's take it over the other side of the field. Look at that, 90s, 80s, 90s. Wow, that's, that's far. Bird! Uh, nah. They know how it works on this field. They go straight for the trees and straight for the houses. But man, I'm impressed with this. Tune's pretty nice. Just needs that eye gain bumping. Video reception, amazing. Hardly any breakup. Hardly any noise. And that punch, man. Oh, this is a nice one. 
take that regulations. <laughs> and what's the battery doing? 14.8. Two minute flight time. So flight time not too bad either on a 4S 650 milliamp. Just have to make sure as it's getting depleted that I don't give it too much punch. Otherwise it could end up resetting. Blimey! There's just so much range with this. No breakup whatsoever, of course. This is with the diversity module. It is going to be helping that, but yeah, pretty impressed, I have to say. And a pretty poor inverted jaw spin there. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, this is one of the best tunes I've seen out of the box. They've done well there. Just need to work on that high gain there, but mm, I'm impressed, man. So our battery is coming down to 14 volts, we're coming up to three minutes, so you're probably talking three and a half minute flight time, maybe three minutes pushing it. I don't actually think it's going to benefit from a bigger battery. I think the 650 milliamp is working okay. Three minute flight time and all of that punch, very acceptable. I would say, that's a better one, <laughs> yeah look at this man, we're heading for maybe a 4 minute flight time if, if I'm cruising, but it's getting pretty low now so I'll come in for a landing. So there you go, that is my review of the VI Fly X150, I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one, and as always, thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.